Track maintenance is not the most glamorous job. The engines considered it slow, monotonous, and dull. Fergus was the exception. He relished in helping the workmen replace old rails and ballast, finding it most satisfying. You can't do it right on the wrong rails, he'd say. Without this work, your treasured express couldn't run. The other engines rolled their eyes. If you ask them, Fergus was more than welcome to it. One evening, Fergus was preparing to take a maintenance train down on Edwards Line. Tracks between Lower Sudbury and Upper Brendan needed to be replaced. Workmen loaded their tools into a van, behind which Fergus coupled two trucks of ballast and a flatbed of new rails and sleepers. When all was ready, he pushed the train down the line. By the time they'd reached the station, a dense fog hung in the air. Fergus's lamp shone brightly, and the men set up lights to illuminate the sight. As they worked, Fergus's eyes wandered. The station was dark, and the crossing gates creaked gently. <laughs> the low chuckle broke Fergus's trance. In front of the flatbed was a van. It bore a devious grin, and his eyes were fixed on him intently. Strange, he thought. I don't remember putting a van there. Fergus, you've left your tool van behind. Fergus glanced at the workman beside him. I did not, he insisted. It was right at the front of the train. It's not there now replied the workman. Perhaps you should check this van. Fergus stopped short. The van was gone. We need our tools, rumbled the workman, losing his patience. Take us back to the yard at once. When they returned to Edward Station, they found Boko and the missing tool van. It's not like you to leave trucks behind, remarked Boko. I didn't leave it behind, Fergus protested. I... He stopped again. At the back of the goods shed sat the grinning van, shrouded in darkness. Would you like me to take the maintenance train, Boko offered. You seem distracted. Fergus looked back to the shed. Once more, the van was gone. I, I am, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, he insisted. The fog must be playing tricks with my eyes. Anyhow, we must be off at once. With the tool van in tow, Fergus left the yard once more. For an engine known for his focus on the task at hand, his mind thought only of the strange van. He kept a watchful eye all the way up the line. Now that they were properly equipped, the men worked fast. They replaced the rails at Lower Sudbury and slowly worked their way along the hill towards Upper Brendam. All the while, Fergus was quiet. Not to worry, old boy, comforted his driver. We're all a bit forgetful sometimes. Fergus didn't hear his driver's words. He was squinting through the fog towards the head of the train. In front of the ballast trucks was a barely visible grin. There came a sudden rush of wind. Fergus shut his eyes as he braced the gale. Watch out! Fergus opened one eye to identify the source of the noise only to find himself face to face with the van and its awful smirk. <laughs> I don't know who you are, Fergus bellowed, but I've had a th- Suddenly, Fergus has been pushed down the hill. 
His brake screamed as he tried to hold the train. The sound mixing with the howling wind and the vile cackling of the van. Fergus shut his eyes, straining with all his might. With one last effort, he stopped at the bottom of the hill. He opened his eyes. And once again, the van was gone. By morning, the fog had cleared, and Boker arrived with the breakdown train. The workman spoke to Fergus. That was some mighty wind. It blew one of the ballast trucks over and sent it toppling down the hill. The tool van must have rolled back and bumped you. Wind can't blow a loaded truck off the rails, Fergus grunted. And where is the other van? Fergus, we keep telling you, there was no other van except for the one for our tools. Now we must get this mess cleaned up. I'll find that van and wipe the smug smirk off its face, grunted Fergus. No one interrupts my work. You're not likely to find it, Boko chuckled dryly, for it doesn't exist. Whatever do you mean? Railway men have always been superstitious about the number 13, explained Boko. But that doesn't just apply to engines. When batches of wagons were built, the 13th was always treated with apprehension. Superstitions are nothing but tish tosh, huffed Fergus. Boko ignored him and continued. I heard of a particularly unlucky van, supposedly the 13th in its batch. A misfortune certainly followed it. One night, an engine derailed while moving it to some old sidings. When the crew returned with a crane, the van had, well, vanished. And... Fergus urged. Some say it was broken up, finished Boko, while others swear it's a trickster, roaming the rails in the pursuit of mischief. When things go wrong without reason, it's likely the work of the 13th van. Many dismiss it, but you know what you saw. Fergus said nothing. As far-fetched as Poltergeist seemed, he couldn't explain how the van moved and disappeared off its own accord. He continued his work with the maintenance crews, but was more focused and alert than ever before. He would never admit to believing in ghosts, but every foggy night, he remains on guard, lest he receives a visit from the 13th van. Thank <laughs> you.